It is Tuesday, the 25th of April, and I'm here with uh, Michael Elrith and Michael Harding with our weekly finance and real estate update. I'm Bill Ruller. Uh, another interesting day or interesting week in the stock market. Uh, big thing today was uh, tech earnings. Uh, Microsoft did report after the close, and actually they were pretty good, better than expected. Um, so um, they were up, trading up earlier. Uh, looks like they're down a little bit right now in after hours. Uh, but, um, you know, they didn't they didn't disappoint. Uh, got also got Amazon and Apple coming out this week. Uh, so everybody's kind of, again, waiting on the Fed, uh, which uh, they're going to be uh, showing up here uh, you know, next week on Tuesday and Wednesday with their usual update. But uh, what do you what do you gentlemen have? Anything anything fun? Hey, um, hey, can I ask you a question, Bill? Sure. So some of these companies whose stock values have risen are due to cost cutting, like laying off employees. I don't recall whether Microsoft, you, who you just reported on, um, laid off employees or not. Do you have any idea about that? Uh, well, everybody's doing cost cutting. I know Microsoft announced some layoffs um, a, a few uh, a few weeks ago, kind of with all the rest of the, of the tech gang. Um, but I think their new stuff is being driven by new new products. And uh, actually, it was uh, cloud services that had a big impact on their stuff, rather than rather than cost cutting. And then they were also an AI winner, aren't they? Yeah, they've become the kind of the big beneficiary of AI, uh, more yeah. so than uh, C three AI. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Open AI. Oh, thanks. Open AI. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Bill, did um, when you say cloud cloud storage or whatever, <laughs> does that mean OneDrive? Or what did you mean specifically? Uh, cloud services. Um, Microsoft's got a very big uh, cloud service, like uh, Amazon Web Services. It's called Azure. So they've got the same kind of deal where you can run apps, you know, on their on their cloud, and a lot of their uh, office products, you know, are now integrated with cloud storage, and uh, and running an interface like a container on the cloud. Uh, so that's become the, the main the main thing. So they're that they had a pretty good uh, revenue hit due to that. So. Well, and like we spoke about uh, a week or two ago, um, I'm sure there's a subscription service. Yes. For that. Yes. <laughs> nothing, nothing. You don't get to own anything cloud related. You only get to rent it. Right. Uh, so, um, Michael Harding, you want to talk about the real estate update? Yeah, sure. What's happening in Clark County? Anything fun? Anything? Well, we uh we're back to a a normal market in the sense that it's not what I like to call inverted, where the list price is higher than a sales price this week. Well, here, why don't I show you show your thing there? We did have a significant pullback uh, from the uh, in the terms of valuation, but the the new to market is above uh, what it was, and what it's been lately. Um, this is the highest number of new to market that we've seen in some time. Um, and I think that's gonna continue to be the case as the weather warms up. We're supposed to have incredibly uh, nice weather this, this the, you know, the rest of the week. And so um, that's gonna be interesting to see how that might impact the, the market um, as, as folks get ready to, uh, to transition to a new home. The price change is relatively flat as it's been the past three weeks. Uh, the pending has picked up, as as did the um, the percentage of when the sold and sold in under ninety days. We have seventy two point two percent. The days on market continues to trend downward. Again, that goes back to the warmer weather um, and more more activity on the on the uh, real estate market, but. If you if you look over one more, the average list price fell considerably from from last week. Uh, what is that? Uh, fifty thousand, forty five thousand or so, fifty five somewhere around there. Yeah, so that six hundred and fifteen thousand just must have been an outlier. You know, a couple yeah. of transactions. Right, right, and um, as well, because see, 
if if you notice, uh, Bill and Mike, the the um, the list price per square foot was lower last week than this week, but the the average list price was much much higher. Um, at at the end of the uh, report, you'll see that the the uh, square footage, the average square footage, was higher last week than it was this week. So, yeah, you know that all takes comes into account when we're filling out the or figuring out the valuation. But however, uh, I don't think it is that influential. So uh, again, uh, you're right, Bill. I think it's just an outlier, which we discussed as a possibility last week, but. If you notice the the sold price is above the list price, um, and to me that's what a normal market that's a reflection of a normal market cycle, because um, you put it at this price due to competition and all that other stuff, and especially in a in a situation where you have um, such a small amount of inventory, you should get a an increase, a slight increase in the um, the price someone's willing to pay. So it's it's looking looking rather rather healthy. And um the only thing that is of concern to me is the uh the coming um especially the the tech um earnings the rest of the week with Apple and Amazon because imagine if Amazon has a, a huge miss on their on their uh their earnings you know, then they might start to lay off people and some of those people that they may lay off are some of the delivery drivers that delivers the packages and and things of that nature and that could have a start to have an impact on the real estate market overall and that could force the the uh the market down or put some downward pressure on the market and then you know next week the fed has their thing going on and so uh if there's an increase in and the rate as they try to to uh, get on top of this inflation thing, and you know, so there's some things that we have to keep an eye on. But overall, the market's looking great this week, and um, I, I my suspicion is uh, that it's going it's going to continue to uh, to go up as we head into the warmer, drier months, where there's uh, historically an increase in activity. I noticed a couple of things on your chart, Michael, that I think yeah. are interesting. Your pending is high for the year. And what was the other one here? Um, the list per square foot is at a high for the year. Right. Let's see, where's the sold? Sold per square foot is uh, edged out uh, mid-February report. Uh, so it's at a high for the year. Well, and if you also noticed in column G, the DOM, that's days on market. Yep. That's the average length of time that something sits on the market before there's a mutual agreement between buyer and seller. And that's trending downward. And um, so if you look at the um, on, at the screen, uh, the, the the highest level was, was uh, 65. We're half that now. Yeah, it's not only though it's been trending down and it reached the low for the year. Right. And again, as as we um enter into the warmer, drier months and there's more buyers on the on the uh on the market and uh looking for a for a new place to call home, I think that number will continue to trend downward. And um I just read recently that there's um the 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 interest rates gone up rose a little this past week in comparison to what it's been doing the past few weeks and so you know there was a downward trend on the uh the interest rate levels and so um lower interest rates the more uh buyers qualify so you're going to get a lot of a lot of activity with the with the numbers coming in the way that they have the last like the cpi and the ppi and all that stuff it's, it's been Relatively good news. Uh, Bill, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Fed should be easing a little, not completely stopping, but easing on his interest rate hikes uh, with with regards to trying to trying to battle inflation, and so that should uh, help help the market overall. Well, you're you're well, talking about a Fed pivot. You know, they may not ease rates, but they may say, "Look, we're going to start. You know, we're not going to be raising there." Um, 
what's what's commercial real estate looking like? Any insights on that? I know that's kind well, of a big concern, especially in the the major cities. Well, I um I, I'm not all that familiar with uh, commercial real estate, but um I can I can get that information and report back to you next week because. That is something that I, I have been uh, interested in because someone that I know personally, um, they have a piece of commercial property, they have a building that um, they're going to want to rent. And, and I'm like, hey, I don't know if that's going to be possible with the, the market the way it is because the commercial market is taking a hit. What, and so, what, um, what kind hopefully of commercial? they'll be able to find something, a, a tenant for them. What kind of commercial is it? Oh, it's just, a, it's just a, um, it's a building that has a front, front uh, office, well, not, you know, like a reception desk and um, three offices in the back. And then there's a garage like area with the hoist and, and all that stuff because mm -hmm. the previous owner, uh, many, many years ago, he, he owned a, a concrete cutting business. And then he sold his business, but kept the building. Um, then, he, you know, he moved away, but he, he used the building for a uh, a location to come spend the night at when he came to town to visit with his kids. Huh. Okay. But he recently passed away. And uh, and so his wife reached out to me and and asked me to check on the, the uh, commercial market. This was a few weeks ago, but um, I don't think the commercial market has changed much. So I, I contacted someone that's a, a commercial market expert. And what she told me is that that the market is is pretty bad, but um, there's more in the uh, larger metropolitan areas and the, the downtown area. Think New York, think Chicago, think Los Angeles. You know, um, those, those companies with a, a large employee number you know, like the total number of employees reporting to the office, there's still a lot of resistance from employees to return to the traditional going to the office and punching a time clock kind of thing. Yeah. Well, you know, it's certainly like in Portland, you know, the, the, the whole Antifa and, and crime has turned it into kind of a ghost town anyway, along with that. Yeah. So, yeah. Just you think know. REI is leaving. I mean, yes. who would have ever thunk it? Uh, well, they're not leaving the Portland area, but they're leaving the uh, the Pearl District. They're still going to be. Are they going to stay in Portland? Yeah, they're still going to be in Clackamas Town Center and um, okay. Tualatin, but they're not going to be in Portland. Well, that's that's still a huge hit. Because yeah, that's, that's another hit. indication of how bad it is in that area, and how uh, many and you know if you can't you can't read the newspaper or get online and and look and not hear about a business abandoning downtown Portland and and that's pretty sad because that's the that's the city I was born and raised in and that's a community that I care deeply about but it's not the city that I recognize from my youth. Uh, that, that change nothing the only constant is change. <laughs> Absolutely. So Michael what are you uh Michael Elworth what else are you looking at anything fun? Yeah you know what I was looking at uh, interest rates and um predictions on the stock market forecast today. Okay. Oh, um, so um, a couple of writers for, for Barron's, um, they're saying interest rates will come down for a fundamental reason. And the, the authors are Larry Hathaway, who co-founded the Jackson Hole Economics, and uh, Alex Friedman, the former chief economist for UBS. So these people have some knowledge. Um, what, what the first thing they're saying is that there's this thing called recency bias, which is and can be an, an overestimate of the importance of the latest information. Right? So the latest information is these higher interest rates. And we all kind of think, okay, they're here to stay. And these guys think, you know, not so fast. Um, maybe there is going to be more savings than expected. Banks deal with savings. They have to put it to work. 
if the demand for that savings or demand for mortgages is, is down or demand for business loans, which the um, criteria for getting business loans is tightened. Um, so if the banks that have savers that are still saving money need to loan out the money, then perhaps the demand will be less than the supply. And in that case, the adjustment would be to um, reduce the interest rate. So that's kind of their thinking. And, um, you know, maybe we can look back on this in six months and see what the direction has been. The other was kind of a, a takeoff on an Elon Musk um, forecast. Um, and I'm going to give you the positive news first here. Um, let's see here. Where did it go? Well, maybe I'll have to segue into the news that's not as positive. Um, if you've heard of Jer Jeremy Grantham, he's a oh, veteran sure. investor. So Over. his prediction currently is that the S&P is going to plunge more than 25%. Um, he thinks uh, things are not in very good shape as far as earnings are concerned. Um, Troy Gayeski of F S Investments also thinks we're going to see a, a downdraft. Um, the chief market strategist at J.P. Morgan says we're going to see some tumbling. Um, what we've seen some of, in spite of Microsoft and Procter and Gamble, are um, are earnings disappointments. But it's been a short week so far, and this earnings. Reporting is going to go on for another two and a half weeks, isn't it, Bill? Um, yeah. The big hit. The big hitters are reporting this week, and then the rest of them report the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah. Um, that, like one thing I, right? I will point out is um, the uh, FedWatch tool uh, is from CME FedWatch tools. Pretty good. Pretty good uh, uh, tool to use. Here, I'll show it to you. Uh, number two. Sure. Uh, it's at the CME group, and uh, you can see that it's um, predicting a um, uh, a, a um, eighty-two percent chance of a uh, quarter point raise. Uh, right now, we're at uh, four point yeah. seven five current. Uh, so basically, saying eighteen percent, it's going to stay stay where it is. Eighty-two percent, we're seeing it. We're going to see a quarter point. Yeah, and there was another re, um, analyst that had the figures somewhat close to 90-10 yeah. um, earlier this week. So they've probably gone down a little bit. Uh, you can yeah. see a month, a month ago um, that um, there was an 83% chance that, that the Fed would stand pat. So obviously things have kind of changed in the meantime. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens in May, but you know the... the um, uh, famous investing adage is uh, sell in May and go away. In other words, a lot of traders and investors take the summer off and you know go to the beach or go to Europe. Uh, there was one that I heard today that uh, sell in May and run away. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking Which, that the near term may not be very bullish. We can't um, we can't run away from our problems. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, there's there's a heady amount of pessimism. Um and uh, you know, sometimes it's warranted and sometimes it's not. And most of the time we can't tell for sure very far ahead of time. Uh well that's that's true. Just kind of play it as it comes. But, you know, I will say Jeremy Grantham has been a kind of a perma bear. Um, he was yeah. uh, predicting yeah. Armageddon back in uh, 2000. 
Um, yeah. yeah. When everybody is predicting it, that's what doesn't happen. You get the rosy, the rosier scenario. Right. Everybody's predicting doom and gloom. Yeah. Right. Well, your friend at Wharton, Jeremy Siegel, uh, is also talking slump. Um, but you know, I, I'm not. It's just that this, you know, these reports I was reading were um, pointing towards that, and I think it was something that may be initiated by a statement that Elon Musk made. Elon is thinking real negatively um, about the overall economy. Um, it may be because of what he's learned through his purchase of Twitter, of how um, our um, for the people and by the people government had um, apparently done some spying through these social network um, companies, including Twitter. And and I'm sure if that happened to me, that probably would taint my perspective as well. Um, yeah, well, we'll kind of go with that. Um, you know, the, the main thing that everybody's looking forward is the whole issue of the uh, um, the debt ceiling. And uh, there's a pretty good chance that the Republicans will get their uh, appropriations bill pushed through. And then it'll be up to the Senate and the White House to figure out if they're going to accept that. Well, I, uh, I heard something Chuck Schumer said that uh, is DOA. Um, well, there's a lot of, of political posturing that's going on there. Um, it's not going to be it's if it's going to be DOA that he's going to have to make it DOA and put up with uh, with that or come up with an alternative. And uh, I think that's pretty what pretty much what um, the speaker is trying to do is, you know, get them to come, come up with something or come up with a counter offer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, hey, Bill, I have a question. You said Apple is going to be reporting later on this week. Apple and Amazon are the two uh, big ones. Yes. Um, Apple, uh, Apple reports, um, Apple reports uh, actually uh, next week on the on the fourth, according to this. Okay. Amazon reports um, uh, two days. Okay. Well, um, how much do you do you know or have any indication as to how much uh, they're involved with the AI uh, arena? Because I would imagine they'd be a big player like Microsoft. Oh, pretty. Perhaps pretty huge. Google. Yeah, Google. All all of them are have been putting out putting out stuff, and they all run cloud services. Um, I did read something today that um, chat GPT uh, is uh, very expensive to run um, that o open AI is is spending like seven hundred thousand dollars a day running all their servers um, to run chat chat GPT um, but uh, Microsoft is coming up with a new chip um, that will help things run more efficiently it won't be running so much on Nvidia hardware but um, you know, OpenAI hasn't really monetized that whole system yet. It's still kind of a giant, uh, a giant sandbox. But they're they're paying a lot of money for it. Well, you know, I hate to I hate to say it, but you know, I've been getting some some messages, you know, in my email, and um, and, and I'm I'm some of them I'm doubting the authenticity. Um, you know, um, like what, what kind of messages? Oh, uh, uh, reports, forecasts. I'd have to review them to to see what they are. But um, you know, the AI thing is, um, unless there is a good means of uh, verifying the the information, um, how are we going to know it's really true or not um, you know i suspect that this is just my opinion because you know whenever there's something that's new to the market somebody figures out a way to 
to cancel it in the sense, not in the, not in the uh, social justice kind of way, but you know, like robocalls, for example, then now right. you have where you can block a number. They'll probably, somebody will probably come up with an invention or, or an app or something to where you can verify whether or not the information that you receive is coming from an authentic source. Well, I think what you're going to see actually is, you know, multiple AIs and I'll basically tie it together in a voting system, you know, oh, yeah. with that, you know, if two, if, if two out of three AIs agree, it's kind of like the old joke about, you know, nine out of 10 doctors agree that Viagra will do good things for you. Um, then hopefully two out of three AIs will agree that um, the information they're providing is correct. <laughs> well, but see, here's the rub. If a, if a whole bunch of people get together and they say something positive or negative about something, then AI may pick that up. And that may be false information. Right. Because AI, AI scours um, volume. Yeah. And so, you know, back to the, is it, you know, back to the future, is it, is it, fake or is it, is live it or real? well you're just gonna have to look at you have to look at performance you know like anything any other system you know especially if you're doing stock picking is it working or is it not how much money are you making yeah well it's an interesting thing most people aren't you know as technical about that and they're doing other things and you know more relying on hearsay than they are um proven facts well, as my, um, as my grandmother and, and, used, to, used to say yeah. about those papers, yeah. they wouldn't print it if it wasn't true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I've got a stack of inquirers I haven't read. i got to get to it. <laughs> <laughs> the inquiring mind needs to know. Absolutely. Right. Uh, anything else, gentlemen? Nope, that's it for me. Okay, Red. Right at the half hour mark. Yeah, well, it's, it's been fun.